please rise and join in our opening hymn, number 66, found in the Blue Hymnals. 66. Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol, or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David. Is it too little for you to weary? Is it too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a son. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in, dread, a hard dread, will be deserted. The word of the Lord. Amen. Now please pray Psalm 80, found in the reading inserts in unison. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, the angels of the like a flock, shine forth, you that are thrown upon the cherubim, in the presence of the Lamb, Benjamin, and the West. Stir up your strength in the hearts, the stars of the hosts, show the light in your arms, and you shall be saved. Yeah. 
And now we're reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Paul, the servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves, who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all God's beloved in Rome, who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord.
Lord, take our minds and think through them, take our lips and speak through them, take our hearts and fill them with Advent longing for the coming of Emmanuel. Amen. Amen. I hope the priest keeps it short today because the World Cup's on. It's on downstairs, so you can have this the second half. <laughs> Um, I recently watched a documentary on Netflix uh, called Heroin, and it's actually a play on the words. It's a, a documentary about the opioid e epidemic, but uh, the title of the, the film has the word heroin, and then in parentheses at the end of it, there's an E, uh, because the documentary really follows three female heroines who are on the front lines of fighting the opioid epidemic in Huntington, West Virginia which sociologists say is the, the epicenter for the opioid crisis in our country. Huntington, West Virginia has an overdose rate 10 times that of the national average. And these three heroines that the film portrays in, in the ways in which in their own capacities, they're passionately working to try to transform people's lives, re restore people's lives who are caught up in the weary nights of addiction and even restore a whole community. One is the fire chief of Huntington. Her name is Jan Rader. And she is passionately committed to being an advocate for Narcan. She's making sure that all of her departments have Narcan on hand. But she's also passionately committed to caring for her firefighters because many of them struggle with burnout and exhaustion because of the countless calls they have to overdose people. And some they're not able to save. Another heroine in the documentary is the judge who's in charge of drug treatment court in Huntington, uh, Patricia Keller. And she's committed to trying to, to have this blend of a healthy blend of, of empathy and providing wraparound services for people who get caught up in the criminal justice system because of their addictions, but also not, not afraid to impose real and tough consequences, which, which people with addictions need sometimes to help them uh, along their paths to sobriety. And the third woman the documentary portrays is, is a woman named Alicia Freeman who calls herself a street missionary. And she just simply goes out at night in her car in the middle of the night in the streets of Huntington looking for prostitutes to connect with and talk to. Many of these women are forced into prostitution because of their dependency on opioids. And she just simply pulls up alongside them and talks to them, gives them a bag of food, even offers them a seat in her warm car if it's a cold night, just simply to show these women that they're loved and that there's somebody who cares about them in the community. I really appreciated watching the documentary on, on two main levels. One is somebody whose life has been touched with the opioid epidemic and losing a stepdaughter to it. I appreciated the way in which the documentary portrayed the complexity of this epidemic. Uh, if only it were as simple as just say no to drugs, but it's not. These are complex and layered situations. And if we're going to respond as a society healthily to them, we need various layers of people, like these three women in different capacities, working together and, and collaborating and, and being involved and, and bringing about some sort of restoration and solution to these these complex problems. But the other way in which the documentary spoke to me was it just said so beautifully or articulated so beautifully uh, what's in the human spirit to respond to, to people whose lives are, are caught up in the weary nights of something like the darkness of addiction. These, these three women are, are hardly much in the scope of how massive this epidemic is in our country and even in Huntington, West Virginia. In a sense, they're just three whispers in the midst of it all. And yet in their own way, the lives of these three women are all whispering words of restoration to people whose lives are caught up in the weary nights of addiction. And that's a, another gift that Advent brings to us in the way in which God's love is at work in and through our lives. Coming so often as a whisper, but, but whispering words of restoration in the middle of our weary nights. Matthew painted a picture of God doing that work beautifully in today's gospel. Everything about it is quiet as it centers around the figure of Joseph. In the Roman Catholic Church out of which I came, Joseph is often called the forgotten saint because Mary gets so much credit. 
Joseph is always the quiet one. And he had some, some dignity to him, and he had every right to dismiss Mary given the situation. Weary and confused and trying to make sense of, of this whole situation and how Mary was with child. And I, I say this every Advent and Christmas, but it's so easy for us to overly romanticize the story of Christmas and forget how scandalous it was for a teenage unwed Jewish girl to be pregnant in this situation. And Joseph and Mary both had to be terrified if they were really human, and they, they were. And, and I can't imagine how weary that had to lead Joseph to be. So, planning on dismissing her quietly, everything about the text is quiet, Joseph, weary, falls asleep. And that's when he hears this whisper of God in the form of a dream, not a bolt of lightning that shakes him, but a, a gentle dream in which Joseph hears in the middle of his weary night of confusion and trying to make sense of all this, words that ultimately wake him to a restored life of walking quietly with Mary into the gift of Christmas in all that would unfold out of so much uncertainty. That's often how the way in which love comes that's able to transform us and restore us in our weary nights in the form of whispers. I think of that happening in the lives of Krista and Jeff Butts. Uh, they live in New Hampshire. Twelve Decembers ago, they had three little boys, seven, five, and two. Krista was unemployed, and Jeff had just started a career as a police officer. And he was picking up as many hours as he could to try to provide for a family of three boys. And it came time to get ready for the Christmas season, and they were just flat out broke, scrimping and scraping. They, they were relying on the church for things like meals and gifts for Christmas. But like many of us who have littles at this time of year, they really wanted to get their boys' haircuts before the holiday gatherings and parties. So Krista scrimped and scraped together $30 so she could have three haircuts at the Great Clips at her local Walmart. And she went into Walmart and got her boys' hair, hair's cut, haircuts and language there. Uh, she goes to pay for the haircuts, and the stylist tells her that somebody who wishes to remain anonymous paid for the haircuts and gave a nice tip as well. And Krista said, you would think, just $30, three haircuts. But she was overcome with emotion. And she said, I, I probably should have kept the $30 that I had and used it for something like gas or groceries. But I looked out into the Walmart store in which Great Clips was, and I I thought, there's probably other people like me here. So she took the $30 that she had for the haircuts and bought three $10 gift cards to Walmart, gave a card to each of her children, and said, let's go walk through the store and see who we think might need these cards and just give them away. And that's what they did. Fast forward now 12 years later, and as things have stabilized in their family financially, they've made it a family tradition that every day in the month of December for the last 12 years, this family decides what random act of generosity or kindness are they going to do for somebody else. And they span the gamut of just being intentional about holding doors open at stores when they're busy and lots of people are passing in and out, or smiling at people, or they put together a hundred bags of homemade candy and little notes of appreciation and love that they dropped on random houses one year. But they've also done deeper acts of love and charity, like one year they adopted a disabled veteran and decorated his house for Christmas and then took the decorations down afterwards. And they, they adopted a widow one year who was newly widowed and did all sorts of errands for her and, and fixed some things around the house for her. Or they, they randomly paid for meals at restaurants for other people. And all of this came really from, from a whisper, an anonymous act of kindness that was $30 in three haircuts that were paid for for Krista. But she talks about how in that act, she can go all the way back to that great clips and that Walmart, and that simple act of quiet love, she found this restoration, because she said, if that didn't happen, I think I would have just kept being turned inward on my own struggles and the, the stress in my life. But somehow that act of compassion restored her, it turned her outward to just want to reach out to other people who might just be in the same situation that she was that holiday season. And they've been doing it now ever since for 12 years. That is the whisper of Advent that this last Sunday holds up for us today. 
It's a whisper that runs through life to restore us in our weary nights. And we hear it even in the weariest of places. Like in our psalm today, Psalm 80. A psalm that was written at a point in Israel's history when they were attacked and conquered by Assyria. And all they had as the psalmist sings here so painfully were tears for bread. Everything was anguish and exhaustion and weariness. And yet still in the midst of that, and three times in the psalm we pray today, the psalmist hears this whisper of hope that there just might be the possibility of restoration that led the psalmist to sing out three times, Restore us, O God of hosts. In the middle of our weary nights, show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. That is, the whisper of Advent that we tune our ears to these last days of this holy season. And we celebrate that whisper because ultimately it runs through life to keep directing us to the manger. Or in a few days we'll discover in the whispers of Joseph and Mary to the quiet coos of their vulnerable and helpless child, the love that's really able to restore all things. Amen. 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 We rise and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father.
Dave writes, for my 94-year-old mother, Gloria, who will be moving from assisted living to memory care tomorrow, for a smooth transition for her and compassion from all those who will be taking care of her. And Beth asks prayers for her son, Justin, who's navigating some complications after surgery for strength and recovery. Sue writes, prayers for Suzanne, who died on Wednesday. Pray for my brother-in-law, Joe, who is having knee surgery next week. Connie writes, our daughter Marianne was sideswiped last Wednesday, and she's having lots of pain from the accident. Please pray for her. Jan asks prayers for Liz, who has a recurrence of cancer, for me in hospice, and Jan asks prayers for herself as she grieves the first Christmas without her daughter, who died from COVID complications. Steve writes, for my mother, and prayers for a dignified farewell for Jean. Cecilia asks continued prayers for her mother, Joan, as doctors are trying to figure out what's causing her seizures. Also prayers for Cecilia's stepfather, Al, who's taking care of Joan. Joshua writes, pray that I can stay at my new apartment, that St. Luke's can be my new church home, and for a better year next year. And Nate continues to ask prayers for their friend, Joe, who passed peacefully a few weeks ago. We pray for Joe's partner, Katie, his son, Owen, who is five, and Liam, and all who grieve his death. I invite your prayers, either silently or aloud at this time. I want to thank all of you who have been praying for, my, for me and for my husband during this difficult time. Um, he had a cancer surgery and they, they didn't find anything um, and no one know. But I always say that I can feel your prayers. I know that this is a praying congregation. And it's like God speaking to me sometimes that you know, people are praying for you, and they're praying for him. And I'm so very grateful for our priest, who has been so concerned, and who's been available. We are so blessed. We continue to pray for Bob, who's usually here handing out reading inserts. As he continues to recover well from his quadruple bypass surgery a few weeks ago. He does ask prayers for patience from us, though, because he can't sit still in the soul. So we pray for patience for them. <laughs> for all of these prayers, spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the God who is our future in the gift of Jesus Christ hold us always in the embrace of faithful love and bring us to new heavens and a new earth. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Make ready our hearts for your coming, O Lord, and receive our prayers in the name of the one who comes, our gracious Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. I invite you to remain standing, to kneel, or to be seated, however you are most comfortable praying, as we confess our sins against God and our neighbor, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we will humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please rise as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also
Again, a reminder, this is a celebration of Holy Communion in the Episcopal Church. All baptized Christians are welcome to receive. Now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Our offertory hymn is hymn number 56, the blue
that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with Joseph, Mary, and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. We now pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power,
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have been graciously accepted us as the only members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacraments of life and blood life. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you by the gladness and singleness of our hearts. Time for blessings. Do we have anybody celebrating a birthday this week who would like a blessing? Sue? I'm going to need a volunteer to get a quick blaze. Would you help me? Loving God, our times are always in your hands. And so we ask you to look with favor on your daughter and servant Sue as she begins another year. Grant that she may continue to grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness and nearness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Any wedding anniversaries? Anybody traveling who would like a blessing? Art and Pat. And you guys are really traveling too. Yep. New Zealand, <laughs> Australia. Wow. Nice. Good day, mate. That's all I got. <laughs> Let us pray for Art and Pat. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole of creation and whose presence we find wherever we go. Bless all who travel, especially our path. Surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Safe travels to Anybody caring a weight physically or emotionally or spiritually and like to celebrate the sacrament of anointing of the sick? Okay. Not too many announcements other than... Um, I think, uh, thanks to all of you who sent in memorial flower donations and names, I think I got them all. I'll be publishing them throughout the Christmas season in the parish post. If I miss one, um, I'll ask forgiveness in advance, but I can always add names. And you can keep memorials coming in if you like. Um, send a, a note with the names and who you would like to remember. Um, we'll be having poinsettias um, right here this week. Um, also, a reminder that we have two Christmas liturgies, um, one on Saturday next week at 4 p.m., and then one on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. It's the same Christmas liturgy both days. Uh, we'll be having an open house at the rectory for anybody who would like to come over after the 4 o'clock service on Saturday. And then on Sunday, the 25th, we'll have a simple coffee hour with some Christmas cookies and coffee down in the parish hall. And uh, lastly, uh, I don't see Cecilia here today. Um, Cecilia is the one who spearheaded our Christmas caroling efforts. Uh, last year and possibly this year, but as we've been praying for her, her mother took ill unexpectedly with these seizures, and she's going to be, is she down there, or will she be leaving? Yeah, she's, she's out of town. Yeah, she's going to be going down to Alabama to be with her mom as doctors try to figure out what's causing these seizures. So, if there's anybody who would like to take on a lead role in caroling, we were originally going to do that on this coming Thursday at 6 p.m. If not, that's okay, too. We don't have to do it this year. Um, just let me know, and you can and we can see about making that happen. But we continue to pray for Cecilia and for her mom, Joan, as doctors continue to try to figure out what's causing her seizures. And lastly, do come down to coffee hour. Um, Argentina and France are on the TV in the corner, and... I'm just, this is like a multitasker's paradise this morning. If you want to at all stay or help, I'm going to do some bringing of the church today, too. So we have some trees that are downstairs that can be moved up and put in the corner, the manger, and some wreaths on the pew. So we'll stick around here. From the Bobby Hour, we can work that all. Please rise for your blessing. <coughs> May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing, 
and set you free from all sin. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 54 in the Blue Hymns. 54.